You've got a lot of really sort of interesting techniques in here. Never say, I don't know. If you don't know, you say, I don't care. And that's important to show almost like infallibility, right? You're never shown weakness. You don't ask questions of your own. You create an air of admiration, uh, admiration and curiosity and mystery. Yes. Th these kinds of responses, you, and in fact, I think you even say something along these lines, they're designed to create almost more questions than answers at the same time, right? So the more answers other people have about you, the more questions she's supposed to create for herself. But if she's getting enough answers where the mystery fades away, you lose that power. Well, who has questions? Students, children, um, amateurs, those are all inferior positions. See, a student is not a student. He's a person or she's a person. A student is only a student when they have a teacher. And, they, and an amateur is only an amateur when there's a professional. That's like saying I'm an amateur glue bottle opener. No, I'm not. But unless there's a professional glue bottle opener that exists, now I'm an amateur glue bottle opener. So if you're the infallible one and you keep that status quo, they must always be asking questions. And they must be always trying to figure you out. Because it's not the fact that they're asking questions. It's not the fact that they get answers to their questions. It's the fact that they have the need to find out something that they know or feel you have the answer to. It's something bigger going on here. It has nothing to do with what you're asking me. You can ask me, you say, hey man, um, where's the exit? No, it's not the fact that you're trying to get out of the movie theater. It's the fact that you walked up to me out of all these people because you feel I know the directions of where to go. And that's what's important. And you keep that frame of mind, whatever you do in life, ask me because I have the answers. And if I don't, like you said, it doesn't matter. I don't care. And you shouldn't either. And you know what they'll say? Okay. Early in the book, you take the girls out of their comfort zone. You say, in it, like one of the first interactions might be, you take a girl who's from the hood, you take her to Beverly Hills, and they feel off, and they feel, you tell them to dress in a certain way, and it's maybe not quite a good fit for where you're going. Like you, you tell, dress up like we're going to a, the strip club. So they wear like revealing clothes, then you take them to a really classy restaurant, and they're looking, they're looking awkward, they're feeling off, people are staring at them. So they're looking at you for leadership. Or you take a rich girl and you take her to the hood, you say cocktail dress, and then you take her to like some fried chicken place in the middle of the hood at one o'clock in the morning, and everyone's like, oh, and gawking and making comments, and they're meek, they're powerless, they're afraid, so they're getting as close to you as they can because you're the safety in the situation. Yeah, I, I put that one time on Facebook in a group and they said, um, guys who think you have need money to uh, make a woman listen to you or follows you or admire you. I said, what if the woman is rich? How do you get her there? I said, I, c I can get Kim Kardashian. And I'm just using that as an example because that's a rich young woman that I came to my mind. So there's no particular reason why I'm using that name. And they said, um, how would you get her? How would you impress her? I said, I was sure things she's never seen. Well, a woman like that has seen everything. I said, no, she hasn't. She's never been to a lowrider show on Crenshaw Boulevard on Sunday night at 8 o'clock. She's never been to street races in East L.A. She's never had uh, a taco in this particular neighborhood. She's never witnessed an actual gang shootout. I said, it's tons of things I can take her to. She's probably never been to an authentic soul food restaurant. She's never done these things. She's probably never been fishing on a dirty-ass Mississippi lake. I said, I bet you she's never done those things. And she will look to you. I said, she's still a woman. Her money does not affect her estrogen. I said, I would take her where she's never been. Oh, you thought I was talking about taking her to restaurants that she actually knows the owner and can buy? That's a dummy move. That's a really dummy move. No, we'd be standing there in East LA eating street tacos. That's what we'd be doing. We'd be playing, have a water balloon fight. I bet you she hasn't done that in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. I bet you. I bet you she's never came to a neighborhood car wash where you actually have to wash your own car and pay for the privilege. She's never done that. I bet you never she's done low riding down Crenshaw, bouncing up and down in that 6 4 Impala. I bet you she's never done those things. And I bet you she'll be as happy as a little kid at, at a Disneyland park if she were. I said, but you took her someplace that she's familiar with. I keep them with the unfamiliar. Why? Because if I'm familiar with something, she's unfamiliar with it, then she's always looking for me, asking me questions. Is my dress too long? That, we go back to that same dynamic again. So yes, there is a way to have a woman who's worth $30 million, but has to question her every move to get affirmation from you.
It's just the world that you took her in. I bring her into mines. I bring her into mine. It's where I rule, where, where it's, it's my thing. If I were a boxer, I would only take her to fights. Why? Because I knock people out here. See, I'm, they're screaming my name. Why would I take her to a basketball game where we're both just fans and she's more famous? That's kind of stupid. You know, <laughs> that would be kind of stupid. I wouldn't do that. I would take her where I reigns. I bet she's never been to an underground after hours. I bet you she's never done that. And she's afraid of everybody in the room. But everybody in the room is afraid of me. If you like that clip and you want to see more just like this, subscribe to our channel for more or click on the videos on screen now. To see full-length episodes, check out our main channel in the description below.